All right. Uh, today is day number four. Uh, I'm kind of falling behind the schedule. Uh, I, I thought I will be able to shoot the videos and uh, painting and it just doesn't work. So all the videos will be probably after I come to my studio and start working on the day. So I apologize for this. I have to probably organize better to shoot or have someone right next to me to um, just do both. Um, because I, I can't put to uh, paint uh, and just I'm on day four and I have only two paintings which I normally have like five six already so let's go paint here we go sure I have everything ready for my frames so I will just concentrate on painting those three days so I'm gonna show you how the, you know, how the canvases are stamped and how to cut them. Also, I forgot to mention the one thing that I really like the organizer of the event, they actually told us, they know the collectors around here. This is like a small, small town. Everybody knows, knows each other. And basically they gave us the uh, kind of run around what, what to paint, what basically, what the, um, collectors buying normally on these events so that was what was nice because she, you know they they say well oh, you guys will be painting this as usually but you know, normally uh the, our collectors like this 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 and this so this was nice just they point to the right directions what to paint so that, that was really nice so let's cut the canvases and hit the road this is the canvas uh 18 by 24 canvas that stamped uh, six times so I can cut any sizes so I know uh, I'm planning on um, I'm planning on painting 12 by 24 so I'm gonna cut 12 by 24 so what I do is I have a special board that I'm using for cutting and the first thing I will do I will I will measure 12 This will be 12. 12. And we'll take a little bit, 132 less. So basically this is And just take a knife with a fresh blade and just cut it. So we're cutting on the canvas surface. So this is a canvas actually. And the first one I will do just a light. Just to make sure I'm, I'm making a groove. And then now I can press harder. That's it. Yep. That's it. So this is our 12 by 24 with the three stamps. So put this on the side. This is what this is six. So actually, I have two frames. I have two frames five by seven. So I'm gonna cut use this as my five by seven so this will be my five inches and then I will have seven seven right here seven right here Let's cut this first. So we'll cut this first. 
I would cut this side. Alright, so this is a small 5x7, just for study work. And I'm gonna do another one, 5x7. by seven and actually we can do probably another five by seven yep just in case so we're using all the can you know we're using canvas so this will be remaining that we're gonna throw it away so let's cut this so this is trash this is trash Cut this. So basically, you got the idea. So you can cut any sizes you want for your painting. And this is the beauty of having a big sheet of canvas. And Five by seven, just in case for studies. And now we have twelve by twenty-four. I need to cut another one. So I just cut all the canvases, and this is ten by. This is ten by. Um, this is ten by twenty, and as you can see, you have three stamps. Uh, this is five by seven. Even I got one stamp, and this is the beauty of having the big sheet, uh, and many stamps so you can you know uh, 9 by 12s so I have for example this I've got two stamps of that one I've got one stamp so uh, that's the beauty of having big sheet of canvas and just ability to uh, cut whatever the sizes you need all right so canvases are cut let's put everything in the, in the car and hit the road ocean is that way so uh, I'm planning to do uh, underpainting and first layer for at least four pieces today and tomorrow another four pieces and work on first four and then by Saturday I'm gonna finish probably eight or nine. I'm planning for eight or nine uh, paintings to finish for, for exhibition. So let's hit the road. So this is my setup. Uh, this is I'm gonna paint right here. The scene, clouds, I like the clouds um, and the shadow shadow actually disappearing but I have an image from yesterday so I'm gonna incorporate this so this is my setup I squeeze already all the paints and normally this is how I do the uh, trash bag and I put rocks inside just make sure it's not flying
it's, it's start raining and this is what you have to go this is what you have to go through <laughs> so luckily i have umbrella i have a tent in in the car but i'm an, actually on uh, someone's property so i'm afraid to actually set the uh, set the tent so i'm gonna do this way so this is my start and i'm painting that so hopefully it will stop raining it was raining so i just blocked or not block underpainting put underpainting not even first coat just underpainting for this uh, location the location number two and i'm going to location number three see if i can uh, do underpainting and maybe even first coat for um that location and then i i would like to hit another another two so it will be four maybe five we'll see so let's go to the next one Okay, let's go paint our last piece. Or maybe not last. Maybe we'll have enough time for more. Oh, today, my friends, is the last day of actual painting. 
and I apologize because I know I promised. Let me get out from the house. I promised to keep you posted, but it's it was unbelievable. Um, I was trying to I was trying to paint, and then I oops, I forgot to set my camera. And then I set my camera and start recording, and I, oops. Bottom line, I realize it's like very hard to do post. So the second day of painting, I didn't have anything. So I'll start nervous or nervous. So I have make sure I have paintings because I have to submit to some submit some paintings. So anyway, I, I, it's possible. Just needs to be, needs it needs to be organized much much better. So. I'm learning myself, so I will show you episodes, and you will see the episodes of um, um, the painting and everything else. Tomorrow will be actual exhibition. Exhibition will be in the brewing, brewing company. It's very interesting. <laughs> uh, it's actually be not going to be hung. On, the painting not going to be hung on in galleries. It will be on the table. They have some restrictions gathering together, so that's why they're doing kind of outside. So this COVID is, uh, but anyway, uh, I'm painting right now with my buddy and I just um, left him to uh, get home because I forgot something. Uh, actually, I forgot the camera. <laughs> so I got the camera. I'm going back paint and I will try to do today because I already have like six paintings. So I will try to shoot videos. Uh, we'll see. All right, so um, this, is, this is it. So today is the last day. I want to finish another. I just finished five by seven, small tiny piece. Uh, what they call teaser or appetizer, or whatever. And I'm planning to finish uh, another painting that I started yesterday. Oh, actually today, this morning, the dunes on, on the beach, and then. Um, and then I'm in a traffic light. And then uh, finish, if I will have the time to finish another painting, uh, 16 by 20. If not, I will do probably another five by seven because it's faster. That's it. <laughs> We're gonna meet this guy. So this is one painting and here is another painting tiny five by seven and let's meet John Eisman did they pronounce it right yes yes painter from awesome painter from Maryland Maryland same as <coughs> wow you right see, see how I brought that over to here and it's starting to sparkle yep. now so John yes. say something uh, I met a new friend Vlad great painter with a great palette I'm enjoying painting down here in coastal Virginia my first of the season so i'm a little rusty uh but i'm doing all right i'm having fun yeah we are having fun <laughs> so let's check his work so this is small work that he does for his host remember i said you have to uh, leave one painting for your host because you know they're giving you a house to leave right John? yes i'm giving that and she likes sailboats so i'm going to put a little sailboat back here in the corner uh with the highlight of the yellow white uh so that it pleases her because that's what she wants uh but it's my type of landscape and then i'm adding a sailboat there we go all right what else do you have do you mind no to, no to, no to so this is one piece he finished this is a uh, sunset right sunset on the boat so awesome piece um uh, and i want to thank vlad for helping me with the composition this light pole as little as it is actually allows you to circle back and sort of in a whirlpool stay where I want you to stay. Um, for the record, this shack was not there. I invented that. That's when painting is fun. Yeah. That's um, what you, you can need. use nature and good old fashioned imagination that the good Lord gave us. <laughs> and that's still nature as well. Wait a second. Where is do you have artistic license for that? I do have a license. Would you like to see it? <laughs> We're having fun. All this right. is, I think, uh, Vlad's favorite painting. Yeah, this is my favorite painting. Look at this tree right here. All this awesome. 
the composition is so like entering into entering right here going through this strip of light everything is blocking it so make sure this brush not... stroke here belongs to vlad <laughs> no he, he to helped you. me with the uh composition um it's not detail it's composition resolve um in in the center of attention so i want to thank vlad for that okay. but i lay in with acrylic and then come back with oil and these gold colors that you're seeing pop through two things are happening number one um, it serves as a highlight, but it's the acrylic and number and I cut in against it So you're seeing cut-in marks of the oil paint and number two you're seeing a visual or retinal difference between organic oil uh, Paint which is an organic substance vegetable oils mixed with inert pigments and you're seeing Acrylic the combination of the two is, is visually stunning to your eye and acrylic is an, a plastic It's melted down Tupperware and so you're seeing plastic versus organic and it's causing a, a Dynamic that you can't get with just oil. So that's what I, I do why I lay in with uh, um, Acrylic does that make sense to you? Vlad? Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, you got another lesson right now <laughs> and uh, uh, And this is BC. This is this is traditional John Eisman work. This is um, the harbor in here in uh, Norfolk, uh, Virginia. And um, Vlad helped me with the sky. He wanted me to keep the curvilinear aspect to my brush strokes there to tie it all together. Um, but I was having fun when I made these little red da dots. Winslow Homer said, always add red flags to your painting. These are my red flags. So awesome. that I'm bringing you back there and and I'm not asking you to stop though because it's not that much uh, Red again. You're seeing an underpainting of acrylic look at the water where you're seeing the teal green Which is actually acrylic underneath and then I'm putting the violets and oils on top So again, you're reading the dynamic between plastic and organic substance um, It has nothing to do with waves. It has to do with uh, I'm tricking you um, it's a visual pun per se. It's a retinal um, trump louis that I'm tricking you with. Um, awesome work. Awesome but that work. takes uh, lots and lots of practice. Yep. Uh, I've been painting since I was 12. Uh, when I got caught uh, drawing pictures of horses on my wall and I got in trouble. <laughs> so my dad bought me uh, a sketch kit and a uh, one of those little 12 packs of uh, you Kmart, Kmart oil kits <laughs> with 12 paints, little jar thinner, and four paint brushes, and these little canvas sets was my first painting. Hey, I, this is how you start, right? That's how you start. <laughs> and uh, here I am a couple years later. Um, I'm not painting my little uh, puppy anymore. <laughs> so, But I'm having fun. And I, it's nice meeting Vlad because no man is an island it's tough to paint in a vacuum and we are our own worst umpires yep it, exactly. we cannot call our own pitch that's why they have umpires in baseball is to call the pitch so vlad has served as my umpire <laughs> and been yeah, calling yeah. some balls and strikes <laughs> for me all right also john can you explain your setup uh, in your in your car my setup yes i um my wife designed this for me this is a regular shelving unit we bought at Home Depot, but she turned it upside down. You see the lip here? That's generally upside down. This is a lip going up as opposed to down. And so the grommet here will not support it. So she drilled holes underneath to support any weight. So I'm able to rack my uh, wet canvases and cardboard in between my frames so that I can stack and be organized. As opposed to, you know, us plain air painters, uh, we end up uh, with wet paint canvases leaning up against our suitcase, against the window, <laughs> on our dashboard. Yeah. Then my wife gets upset and she asks me how to clean up the paint off the dashboard. <laughs> I said, you can't. It's oil based and it's cured out. <laughs> and so she designed that for me. And then this is a regular old French Julian easel. I, I, I'm going to try Vlad's uh, Day Tripper. Uh, this is too heavy for me to be carrying around, but it makes a nice uh, easel in the back of my car, which I use as a portable studio, as you can see. I use a 
five gallon paint lid as my uh, palette. And it actually <laughs> serves as a color wheel, voila. So the opposite of blue is orange, the opposite of red is green, the complement. So color. it makes an, an organization, it's organized in terms of the physicality of painting for me. It also has reservoirs on the side where you can have oil and dip into and you can actually pop this out because it's a five gallon lid and hold on to it like this. Um, I invented that. Uh, so that's my uh, two bit with Vlad this afternoon. I'm done painting here and I'm gonna move over to a lady's house um, that uh, Vlad likes the start of. You're gonna pull, uh... You know what? We're gonna paint, John. We're gonna paint together, and yeah. I will, I'll shoot the video. About, okay. You know, when are you gonna actually paint? Okay. Here's another painting right there, which is awesome. It's like 16. What? 16 by 20? 16 by 20. Yeah, 16 by 20. Uh, awesome tree. Like a composition is. We, we can actually t talk about the composition. Everything is. Uh, John uh, graduated Mike with his Maryland Maryland Institute College of Art in 1981. 1981. Magna cum laude. Wow. So. We have to, you know, we can learn something from him. All right, so this is his setup and his painting, and uh, we're going to paint, uh, we're going to move to another location. Today's the last day of painting, and uh, tomorrow will be, tonight we'll be framing everything and putting on the table tomorrow for exhibition. Yes. All right. John, thank you. Thank you, Vlad. It's good. That's good. So this is my setup. Just, I have a boxes, uh, tent, umbrella, everything is right here. I love to paint like this. So basically, you know, open the trunk, uh, put my easel, and sit right on the back. Um, so, as I said, we're gonna move to another location and probably finish another painting, right, John? Yes. Yeah. And um, tonight we'll be framing, even though we have an invitation from our host, not from host, from ho event host, right? Is that right? To yes. Event host. For, uh, you know, wine and cheese and stuff. Yeah, wine and cheese, just hang out uh, as the last day because tomorrow will be exhibition, sales, and everybody will take, will take off, so. All right, we are on another location. I painted, painted this location, or at this location, I think yesterday, and I failed miserably, uh, or two days ago. So, I found two trees and kind of in the park, so. I'm trying to paint this. Anyway, let's go and finish the last piece. And tonight we'll be framing. So I will show you how to frame, frame it. And tomorrow, I'll probably when I move all, everything to the exhibition, I'll have a little bit more time. So I'll set up my, I'll take a camera and I'll be shooting um, some footage as well. So let's, let's go, let's start it. I'm going to paint these two trees. And this hanging thing, I don't know what it is. But it's kind of, you know, I like the spots and so let me paint this. No, I'm not a rock star. <laughs> I just started it. Nothing. What are you doing? I, I guess this is a very popular thing. Hanging. Oh, yeah. Okay, the so, swing, yes. So I'm going to do two trees and that thing right there. Yes, the <laughs> swing is a very hot commodity. <laughs> yes, people will love that. You can edit out the dumpster, huh? Dumpster will be the center. <laughs>
under painting, so we have to clean it. Clean this now. This under painting. So the sun is gone right now, so I can use my photo. Okay, so this is the painting before the last touch I have to put. Uh, it's a twinger. So I'm going to put a line over here and swing over here. So it will be kind of looking down. So this is, I want to dry this, make sure this is dry, and then I will continue. Just finished the last one, so it's time to um, pack and go home, relax a little bit. Okay, I'm back to, to apartment. Uh, it's around nine o'clock, uh, eight o'clock actually. Uh, we had gathering, all the artists got together at the host, uh, organizer of the event. Uh, very nice uh, people. So, but right now it's time to frame all of this. Uh, put all the images, I mean painting into the frame. So I'm gonna show you how to frame it. And uh, I have to go through selection what to put for the judging and what to display first for sales and so on and so on. So guys, plein air is, is a lot of fun, but it's a lot of work. It's a lot of stress as well. So, But you know, some people like it. I love it, uh, even though it's very stressful, but um, it is what it is. So let me show you how to frame it. So we need, we need cutters, and the first what you will do is this. So basically, straight this out. Then you're gonna put inside from the back. I mean from the side, and get it, get it about uh, two two and a half inches, and that is. Now we're going wrapping from the right side of the main line and going inside and then we're gonna wrap one more time but this time we're going on the left side so the, if wire is in the center first time we're going on the right side and inside right here and inside and then right now we're going on the left side and we're not going to inside but we start turning this end around the main line like this and it's you know four or five times is you know more than more than enough so we can cut this remaining i can wrap it but this is more than enough. Oops, I didn't cut completely. Okay. So this is one side. All right. And this is self 
locking. Unfortunately, I can't do closure. So let's see right here. I'm gonna do this. And we're gonna do this right now, so I will show you. Now, since this is already already wired, now I'm gonna measure how much do I need to cut. So what I will do, I want to be around two inches from the top, or inch and a half, I'm sorry, inch and a half. Inch and a half to the two. This, this is five by seven, so I can do two inches, or actually one and one and a half inches. So I will hold it right here, then I'm going to pull it right here, right here, and I'm going to mark it like this. So this is from this point to the ring, and then I'm going to roll about two and a half inches, and I'm going to cut the wire. Okay? Now, this is my... This is where it's going. It has to stop right here at this corner. So I'm going inside. Okay. Now I'm going to bend back on the right side of the main line and going inside, inside the ring. So when I'm inside, now I'm going to bend one more time, but on the right, on the, on the left side. And this time I'm not going inside the ring I'm start wrapping around main, main line okay and as I said four, three, uh, four or five times is more than enough if you don't want to cut you can keep going and this is it. this is it this is how properly so now if you pull it it's not going to pull so this is how properly wire your frame. And this is ready to, to be hung or hit. Okay, so let's do another one with for everything from, from, the, from the beginning. So this is a painting right here. And I normally put it against the wall. So I make a selection, okay? Okay. So this is the frame, another frame. Each frame comes with its own hangers to, I just collect them just in case, this is not vinyl wire, just in case I'm running out of uh, my hangers, new rings and the wires, then I can use this. But they normally go to uh, to my box. All right, so we're pulling the frame. It all depends. It will depend where you're framing it. But I normally pull the bubble wrap and set the bubble wrap on the floor to make sure if I put my frame on the floor. It's not damaging, okay? Always remove the, this label from the framing. All right, so let's get another painting. This is another small painting that I did uh, today in the park. All right, so this is going inside like this. Now I know, just double check, make sure yeah, so this is top, this is the bottom. Now what we have to do is staple. And we staple about inch from the corner. Inch from the corner. Oops. Yep, we just ran out of staple. But we have the box. All right, so you just take new strip. Oops. Open it up. I probably should. And lock it. 
and I'll shoot probably another video how to use this and how to properly. Right now I'm kind of, I need to frame all, I mean, yeah, I need to frame all paintings. So I thought it would be a good idea just to show you how it actually is done. Real time. Oops. And see this, it's not going all the way in. So I have to adjust this to make sure it's going fully in. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so this is painting in the frame. And let's... So now, now we know this is the top, right? So it will go right here and we need two screws. Right, so we take a drill and you can measure, I just, I know it's four, about four inches. Uh, this is five by seven, but this is the longest side, so we can do a little bit more probably, like this, something like this. So. Just take a drill. Take the first one, this angle, and then, Like this. Yes, it's better to use ruler, but it's in the car, and I don't feel like going. I did too many trips today. Oops, it's higher. Okay, it's lower. This is about right. We got this part. Now, let's use wire. And again, we're gonna go inside about this bend. Now, we're bending on top of the ring and going inside the ring. And we're going, when we're wrapping it, we're wrapping on the right side of the main line. So basically, and we're doing this first. This first. And then I'm going one more time around, but I'm going on the left side. So if you look, I have to one more and make sure. I'll show you how it looks like. So basically it looks like this. So the first time I went on the right side, right here, oops, right here, you can you can see it. See this? I wrapped it on the right side, went inside the D-ring, now I'm going, now I'm going on the left side. And I'm going, oops, and when I'm going on the left side, I'm going to wrap it. like this. And I think I'm, when I come back to my studio, I will do better video. It's a better setup. Now, again, I'm holding my finger right here and I'm measuring from this point center to my D-ring, top of the D-ring and I'm mar making mark. So this is my mark right here. See this bend? Now from this point, I only need just something like this to wrap around. So I can cut this extra. 
Okay. And I'm doing the same thing. I'm going inside. I'm wrapping on the right side. See this on the right side? Now I'm going inside of the ring. And now I'm gonna bend more time, but I'm going on the left side, right here. And then as soon as I pass left side, I start wrapping around the main line. And that's it. Now we can pull it. And now we're gonna break it. All right. Okay, so this is it. I have to frame one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I frame only two. Uh, now I need to frame, oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I need to frame nine. So I'm gonna restart, you know, recording 